Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I just want to thank you uh, for being here this morning. And also, I want to thank God for those who will be watching our service online. Uh, today, we will start a new series. Let's talk discipleship. Let's talk discipleship. What a text that we have read. How many of us run away from this text? Now, I'm telling you in our society, we don't like this text. Many times when I read this text, I say, really, what does that mean? Uh, you know, to hate my father, my mother, my spouse, my children, my family, even myself, so that I can follow Jesus Christ. Let me establish uh, something uh, from our own uh, perspective. Uh, from the Hebrew uh, context, uh, the word love, which means ava, and the word hate, which means sana, all these two words express an emotion that involves an action. They communicate preference. These two words in the Hebrew context communicate preference. Love and earth in the Hebrew context. So as Jesus is talking to his fellow, he's telling them, unless you prefer me more than your family, unless you do not prefer more your family than me, if you do not prefer me more than you prefer your husband, your wife, your father, your mother, your children, even if you prefer more you than you prefer me, then you do not fit to be called my disciple. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, discipleship. What is discipleship about? Let me also remind you that discipleship is not an offer that we make to Jesus Christ. It's not an offer like if we are doing a favor to the Lord by following Jesus Christ. Discipleship is more than just accepting Jesus Christ to be your Savior and the Lord. Discipleship is more than just believing in Jesus Christ. Discipleship is about following Jesus Christ. Not only you accept Jesus Christ to be your Savior, not only you accept Jesus Christ to be your Lord, not only you believe in Jesus Christ, but you also commit to follow Jesus Christ all the way. A disciple in this context, my brothers and my sisters, is a follower of Jesus Christ. Let me pause for a while. A disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, follow me. Jesus did not say, follow your church. Jesus did not say, follow your brothers and sisters. You know how many times we... Sometimes get disappointed by what people have done in the church or our friends or, uh, you know, people have disappointed us or people have done something. Then we say, I just don't want to mingle with church people. Uh, Jesus never said follow people. You are not to follow anybody. We are to follow Jesus Christ. That's, that's the call. The call is to be a follower of Jesus Christ. How do you follow Jesus? Let's talk discipleship. How do you follow Jesus Christ? My sisters and my brothers, you do not follow Jesus Christ based on your own terms. You do not set up the preferences. You don't define the terms. Jesus defined the requirement for discipleship. It's a question of preference. Yes, Jesus is saying that unless you prioritize my relationship with you over your family, over yourself, then you do not fit to be called my disciple. Discipleship is a question of priority. How do we follow Jesus Christ? Jesus defined the requirement. You know, in our days, the church in the 21st century, especially the church in America, we love the benefit that comes with salvation. Oh, how we have heard sermons and churches that grow so quickly when we preach that gospel of benefit. Come for benefit. Come so that you can get everything you want. God wants you to be happy. Come so that you can prosper. Or if I were to preach, come next Sunday, 
that God will give everybody here $10,000. This church will be full. Oh, I bet you. The pews will be filled with people. Yet Jesus is calling us to a different type of gospel. Jesus is bidding us to come and die. Jesus is saying to us, come and die. In the text that we have read, Jesus starts with a tough question. Jesus put that statement, if you do not love me, then you love your father, your mother. If you do not hate, if you do not prefer me more than you prefer your family, you cannot be called my disciples. So Jesus established the requirement of discipleship. Then he began to explain to them as a good teacher, what a man who, whoever a person who would like to build a house will not sit and count the cost. We too have done that when you want to buy a house. You don't just go and sign for a big house when you know you don't have the means to buy the house. <laughs> I remember when we were approved for our mortgage, the lady at the bank told me, you can borrow anything, we have already approved you. You can increase whatever you want. I said, no, 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 no. no. We are not increasing whatever we want. We will stick with what we wanted because this is where we are. Now imagine if I was crazy and then in the name of the American dream and I go and buy that big time house because something happened. We bought a house and six months later, my wife stopped working. They lay people off. She was on the list of the people that were supposed to be. They say, say, she was with no job for a while. Now imagine if I did not calculate and I had that big mortgage. No, by this time I will be visiting you at your house and stay for a long time. <laughs> You'd be wondering, when is the preacher going to go home? The preacher is still at home. So I'll be visiting you and Odette and the boys will be visiting the other members and then we'll be changing like that. <laughs> Counting the cost. Can I afford it? This is what Jesus is saying. There is a cost. When there is this man who wants to go to war with 10,000. And then he discovers that the other one who's coming. He's coming with 20,000. This man will say, no, 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 no. Let's have peace because I cannot afford to go and fight this person who has more soldiers than myself. Counting the cost. Jesus is bringing this to us. Salvation is not free. Grace is free. But salvation costs. We must count the cost of being disciples. There is a cost to pay. There is a cost to pay, my sisters. There is a cost to pay, my brother. Because when Jesus bids you to come, Jesus is saying, come and die. Jesus is calling us to a life of self-denial. We will never become true disciples of Christ. We will never become true followers of Jesus Christ. If we are not willing to forego personal pressure. If we are not willing to practice self-discipline. If we are not willing to self-deny ourselves. Self-denial is expressed in the Bible as picking up our cross daily as we follow Jesus Christ. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. All right? You see the text? What does that say? Hello? <laughs> Can you read? Help me read. Self-denial, picking up our cross, as we receive the grace of God, it teaches us to do what? To renounce. Unless we are willing to give up everything, willing to abandon the attachment of the things of this world, my brothers and my sisters, if we are not willing to pick up our cross, Luke chapter 9 verse 23, say it is right. Luke chapter 9 verse 23, it says what? Then Jesus said, 
Whoever wants, all right. See, Jesus is establishing, defining the requirement of discipleship. That we are to pick up our cross daily. We are to deny ourselves. In other words, we are to lay down our preferences. Because now our world, in our world today, all is all about preferences. In fact, even the debate that is in the church today is over preferences. There are those who prefer to be under scripture. And there are those who prefer to be above scripture. Is a choice that people make. That Jesus is saying, if you want to become my disciples, you got to prefer me more than you prefer yourself. Being a disciple of Jesus Christ, my brothers and my sisters, requires that we are committed to God. Our commitment, a promise to do something to the best of our ability. Working hard, that's commitment there. We work hard every day. We are willing to lay down our lives. We are willing to give ourselves to God. That's what discipleship is about. Matthew chapter 16, 24 emphasizes that even more. It says, This is discipleship at its best. Following Jesus Christ, denying ourselves. That's what it means to follow Christ. What does that mean for you? How, what does that mean as we live our life to be a Christian in the 21st century in relationship to our community, in relationship to the poor, in relationship to this world that is really disconnect with God. Paul understood the price and the cost to be paid. He said to the church in Rome, offer yourself to God as a living sacrifice. Do not just copy the behavior of the world. Do not be like anybody else. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. As you offer yourself to God as a living sacrifice to God. Commitment to God, my brothers and my sisters. An obligation. We dedicate ourselves. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says something interesting. This is what we are to do. Our commitment looks like. Do your best. Do your best to present yourself as one who is approved. That's discipleship, my brother and my sister. Discipleship is making God your priority. Discipleship is making God your priority. As you are doing your best to present yourself to God... As a worker who has been approved, who's not ashamed, you make God your priority. Now, let me tell you something about priority. You know that. Some of you, you know what it means, priority. You know, you have practiced priority all your lives. And even now, we continue to practice priority. For instance, we pay our mortgage. The first things we get money, we pay our mortgage. Those of you who have paid off your mortgage, thanks be to God. But there are people, in fact, you paid it off because you were paying, you were making payment. You did not just receive it, it was not a gift that uh, the mortgage company gave you. We pay our car note. We pay bills. If you want electricity in your house, you got to pay the bill. You cannot just like to have power and electricity in your house and you refuse to pay the bill on the other hand. You know how many times we don't like to pay the bills, especially Alabama power during this time? It's so expensive, I don't know why. You know, they say you use it, but because you want electricity, you, are, you pay, you, you, you pay because you want it. My brother and my sister, Jesus is also saying to us, if we want the kingdom of God and we desire the kingdom of God, we must desire God. 
more of God. So as we follow Jesus Christ, the challenge to us becomes, do we make God our priority? Discipleship. It is about making God our priority. It requires total obedience to God. Absolute obedience to God. In fact, Jesus Christ himself did not just talk about discipleship. He did not just preach about obedience. Jesus practiced what he preaches. On one occasion, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus prayed that night as the vision of the suffering came forward. The cup of salvation. He saw a cup and the suffering he had to endure for you to be saved. Jesus prayed and said, if this cup will pass away, my preferences, I do not prefer to go to the cross. But I surrender all to you, not my will, but your will. He died on the cross for you and I. That's the cost of discipleship there. Obedience to God. Not my will, not my preferences, but your preferences, oh God. I will align my position to your position, and then I will follow you. Will that be easy? No. No. In this country, we have the privilege to come and talk about God with this freedom. There are places where people are killed just to carry the Bible. We too have a price to pay. There is a cost for us in our own context here in the United States. What does that mean to be a follower of Jesus Christ in the 21st century? In a world where we have removed God at the center of our lives. Where we have put ourselves and defined reality based on us, based on our preferences. That we have said, I am the master of my own destiny. And I define what is good and right based on how I feel. And how I prefer to live my life. All oh, my brothers and my sisters. Jesus is saying to us. You cannot be my disciples. If you prefer you. More than you prefer me. If you prefer your culture. More than you prefer me. You cannot be my disciple. There is a cost for discipleship. Jesus paid the price. This table is not a table of judgment. This is how much God loves you. On the night the Lord gave up himself for us. He took the bread. He broke the bread and he gave it to the disciple and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup after he has given thanks. He gave it to the disciple and said, take and drink. This is the, the blood of the new covenant. My blood that I give for you. The Lord Jesus Christ recommended us that we do this in remembrance of him. So as you come today to partake to the body of Christ and to partake to the blood of Jesus Christ, this is how much God loves you. May you encounter God and as you come, I invite you to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Make up your mind and make up your decision. It's about preferences. So those who will help me, would you please come forward? And as we are partaking, Brother Keith, you lead us into that song, Are you able, say the Master, to be crucified with me? And our response is, yes, Lord, we are able. Renew us. Make us like you, O oh God. In the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let all of God's people say it. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. The body of Christ, given for you. Take and eat and be thankful to the Lord.
blood of Jesus Christ shed for you. Take and drink and be thankful to the Lord. The blood of Jesus Christ given for you. Take and drink and be thankful to the Lord. All right. <laughs> The table is ready. Would you please come? Just as you are. Come to the table. God so loved the world that God gave his son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish. But have eternal life. Come to the table. <laughs>